Okay. So, I got that pretty close on both of those. And I'm going to clean that up the rest of the way and get it just right up to that edge. But I'm going to do that with a knife and some sandpaper. So this is just a quick look at the 3D printed parts that you'll need to put together the handheld game console. Uh, this is in addition to the electronics that you'll need. There's a list along with links uh, in the description. Hopefully this will give just kind of a quick visual overview of how it goes together and what you actually need. So. Let me just take it all the way down. I'll start with the bottom. This is the bottom piece that everything mounts to. Uh, there's an on-off switch that goes right here in the middle. There are five buttons that you'll need to print. They go over here. And then there's going to be a right and a left adapter which look like that that are going to slide it into the sides there's a, a piece that goes right here at the bottom that will help hold your pie in place and then lastly the top piece so you can print those yourself you can have somebody else print them uh, I know a lot of community libraries have 3D printers and you might be able to get one printed there uh, but those are the 3D printed pieces you'll need I've designed it so for the most part you don't need any supports. The only place you might need supports is underneath these two little bridges right here. You likely could get away with no supports though. Uh, normally you would need supports in the screw holes but they are there's a layer uh, that you'll have to break through before you can put screws in those and the end result is that you can print those with no supports. Anyway, that's a quick look at the 3D printed pieces you'll need. Let's go on to the actual assembly. The first thing you're going to want to do before you cut apart your controller is take the controller apart and unhook the cables that are joining the two together. Uh, you're also going to remove a little circuit board from the middle that has the USB that is normally used to connect it to the Nintendo Switch. There are some little plastic covers you can see me removing right now that are covering some slots that you're going to use after you 3D print the piece that holds it to the case. Now I'm going to unclip the two cables that hold the two halves of the controllers together and remove those cables. It might be a good idea to mark the cable and the spot that it's plugged in. Both of these cables are the same length and the same cable, so it doesn't matter so much which one goes where as long as they are in the same spot on the two separate sides. If you mark the plug and mark the cable though, it'll make it a little bit quicker and easier to know which cable you're plugging in without trying to keep it straight and track it to the other side. At any point during this process, you're also going to want to unhook the cable that attaches that middle board with the USB-C plug on it and remove that board while you're at it. To actually get the remaining two ribbons out, you're going to have to remove the circuit board on both sides. Once you've taken two screws out, you'll be able to just lift it out of place and remove those remaining two cables.
Next, just reassemble the controller and you will be ready to cut it in half. You've already seen how I did that. However you want to do it is up to you. Uh, whatever you do, just make sure you cut it as flush as you can to the body of the controllers. And the little piece at the bottom where the ribbon cables ran through, be sure to make it a straight line off of the sides of the controller. In the interest of time, I've already reassembled half of the controller. It has the 3D printed part in it uh, that you use to attach it to the case that holds everything. You can see how I did that on the other half in just a minute here. Once you've attached your cables and reassembled it, you'll run the cables through the bottom of the case and slide the controller into place. Once again, you'll have to completely disassemble the controller to attach the cables. Uh, this ended up being a little bit harder than it looks just to get the cables and everything to go exactly where you want them. When you do attach the cables, you aren't going to want to have any slack really. There was a bit of slack when it was assembled originally. This case is a little bit bigger than it would be uh, when it was in its original housing for the Nintendo Switch, so you're not going to want the same slack that it had in the original case. Now, before you put the top half of the shell back in place, you're going to want to put the 3D printed clamp adapter piece uh, into the shell and then put the top shell in so that it, it sandwiches that into place. Carefully put in one or two of the bottom screws just to hold the two halves of the shell together while we assemble the rest of the console. To attach the controller to the Pi, instead of using up one of the USB ports and having all of those ports not accessible inside the case, I decided to just solder a cable straight to the pins off of the USB for the Pi, and then to run that cable uh, that I soldered off of the Pi down to the board that had the original connection for the Nintendo Switch. As you can hopefully see in the video, the order of the cables is black, green, white, and then red. There are actually open pads available on the back of the Pi for those cables, uh, all except for the red. So the red will actually go off of the little USB pin sticking up through the board, uh, just past the three open pads. There are two sets of pads available for the USB 2. One is for the top port, one's for the bottom port, and it doesn't matter which one you choose. After that, you're going to solder the other end of your cables to the board that had the USB C connection. Before you can solder it, you will just want to desolder the plug that originally went into the Nintendo Switch. It's held on by five big globs of solder and should be pretty easy to desolder. Once it's desoldered, uh, the cables are going to go uh, black to the ground mark, uh, red to the V bus, green to the D plus, and white to the D minus. At this point, you're ready to start assembling the rest of the console. The first thing that we're going to put in place is the battery. The battery will also need its cable lengthened just uh, maybe two or three inches so that it's long enough to reach the plug on the Raspberry Pi. The next thing that we're going to install is the Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, I find it a lot easier to hook up the screen and get things plugged in if you plug in the HDMI cable right now. You're also going to use one of the fans from the cooler to bring cool air in from outside the case. I put a smaller heat sink in place of it just to help dissipate some of the heat off of the bigger cooler. Another thing I forgot to mention was the power connector on the Pi itself. 
uh, in the name of saving a bit of space, I clipped off the plastic body around the plug of the power connector and bent the pins back at 90 degrees. Now, you're not going to want to bend these more than just the once straight back, uh, so make sure you have the case removed as much as you want to around it, and then be very mindful when you're plugging in your battery from this time out and make sure you get that polarity correct. I marked the pin side that's negative with a sharpie kind of like I did with the ribbons for the controller so that I would not get confused as to which side was negative on that power connector. To install the Pi itself, slide the USBs and the network jack through the holes in the case that is there for them and match up the holes in the case uh, in the bottom with the screws that are holding the power board in place and the whole thing should just snap down into place. Next just screw your fan down. As just kind of a side note while I get this fan installed, uh, I soldered the power cables for the screen itself to the same plugs that the fans are using for power. So the screen and the fans are both using the same GPIO pins. Now we'll install the extension cable for the audio jack and the extension cable for the USB-C power. Both of these cables are press fit into place. Uh, they're intentionally a little bit tight. If you have to, you may have to trim the edges to get them to slide into place. Or if your connector's loose, maybe just use a piece of adhesive or a dab of glue to help hold them into place. When you plug in the USB extension cable, uh, be mindful and be sure that you plug it into the power board and not the power jack of the Pi itself. It needs to go into the power board, one, so you can activate the battery, and two, so that it actually charges the battery when it's plugged in. Finally, we're going to drop the five little plastic pegs into place that will act as the buttons for the buttons on the back of the screen itself. Now hook up your power cable, again being mindful of polarity. At this point, black should be on the left and red should be on the right. And then, don't forget to hook up the ribbon cable for the controller connection board. And after that, I have a piece of foam just from packing material I cut out. I'm going to put it on top of the board to help hold things in place. And then install the last piece that will help hold the Raspberry Pi in place and help hold the board and the ribbon cables in place and out of the way. Now we're going to install the screen. I've already put it in the bezel here. Uh, the four screws that you'll need are M3 by 6 millimeter screws. Also be mindful of your orientation. The speakers should be opposite of the bottom pieces that hold the power connector and the audio jack in place. Now you'll want to attach the power connector for the screen and angle the screen down so that it makes it easy to attach that last ribbon cable for the screen. I did forget to mention, because of the way I designed this to be printed with no supports, the screw holes will need to be unblocked before you can put the two halves together. Uh, you can clear those out just by poking an Allen wrench through and breaking the little plastic barrier. 
pop the screen into place and you're now ready to screw the two halves together and put any remaining screws into the controller. The screws that you'll need for the 3D printed body are M3 by 16 screws. One thing I did forget to record was installing the power switch itself. This can be done the most easily right after you install the Pi board itself. However, it can be done at the very end. Either way, you just need to make sure the slot on the switch itself lines up with the power switch itself. In order to install it, it's just press fit, so you'll press the power slider into place. Finally, the power board has to be activated if it has completely lost power due to a dead battery or because the battery has been unplugged. To do this, you'll plug in a USB power supply and then push the activation button on the other side of the small hole in the back underneath the power slider, just as shown here. I will have a bit more information on printing the files themselves with the files on Thingiverse or Prusa printers. If you have any specific questions about the prints or how to print them, uh, feel free to ask in the comments and I will do my best to answer those questions for you. The same goes with RetroPie or any other part of this project. If you have a question, just ask and I will do my best to answer. If I don't answer, I will do my best to send you in the right direction. If you have any ideas for other projects you'd like to see me try, uh, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and this project, go ahead and share the video. I really do appreciate the support. And as always, thanks for watching Nothing Spectacular.